Hey, what's going on, guys? It's your boy Nistro here, and Gladiator Beasts are back. We we recently got some more support for this deck revealed for Supreme Darkness, the set coming out for us in February, early February, I believe. There are five new Gladiator Beast cards in this set. There's going to be a new Mocharmi in this set. It's going to be some new heroes, a whole bunch of stuff that we may talk about further on down the line. But for now, I think these new Gladiator Beasts are interesting because they definitely give the deck a boost up in power to kind of like bring it up to speed with the format that I think the deck is needed for a while. Tribe Brigade was good, but it didn't give the deck everything. It didn't give the deck exactly what it needed, where I think now this new support gives the deck exactly what it needs. Just like a tad bit too inconsistent, a tier or two too weak to keep up with the meta, but like good enough to keep up with like the general speed of the game. Let's just get straight into it. Uh, our first Gladiator Beast is Gladiator Beast Magister. His new level 3 Earth Beast, which is actually going to come up later, his uh, stats. But he has the regular Gladiator Beast effect, you know, end of the battle phase, shuffle back, summon out a Gladiator Beast. And he also has an effect when he's summoned by the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster, you can add a Gladiator Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Now that's very important because that actually allows you to search cards that were not searchable before. Cards like Gladiator Proving Ground, which is your rota for the deck, was not searchable before, but now you can search into it. Well, funny enough, this was kind of like a brick before. You 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 never actually wanted to play this card. Like maybe maybe in like Edison format, this was a three of to get you the the particular uh, fusion material that you needed. But in like modern Gladiator Beast, this is like a brick. Like this is like a non card. Like you don't you really don't want to play this card. The other card that uh, Magister can search is Gladiator Rejection. And this is actually really important because Rejection was not searchable before. This card was a really decent extender, but there was no way to get access to this card except by searching it, and so you needed to play three of it. But the issue with this card is that it didn't actually do anything by itself, so it could become a soft brick if not mixed with other Gladiator Beast cards in your opening hand, like Test Tiger or a way into Test Panther. Rejection was awkward to play before simply because of its non-searchability and its lack of doing things by itself, but giving us another searcher in gladiator beast it may actually help the ability for rejection to become a stronger card so magister can reveal itself in another gladiator beast monster in your hand and then special summon both of them so this is actually something that is really important for allowing you to start your turn because this allows you to start your turn a without using your normal summon but b will help you push forward because now you could chain block the magister with whatever other gladiator beast uh, monster that you've summoned so it can be very it can be a, a really good uh, starter or extender so if you if you don't hard open the magister and you like summon it from deck with like test panther let's say search another one later on the turn you can still just special summon both of them and just use it as like a link material or something or even for the material of another new gladiator beast monster that we will cover in a bit but yes for this card to start your turn you have to open two gladiator beast monsters moving on to the next one we have Test Bear, which is the new Test Animal that we've had a series of. Test Tiger has kind of stopped being good for like a while. It's just not that good to begin with. Again, for anything past Edison format. So Test Bear is hopefully going to take its place. So if you control a Gladiator Beast monster that special summon from a deck or extra deck, you can special summon uh, this card from your hand. And you can only summon it once per turn that way, which is cool. It can be a nice little extender. Now, I don't like that it has to be summoned from, from a particular area. But, I mean, I guess if you draw multiples, that could come up, right? Because it's a test monster, so it's going to have some effect to summon out Gladiator Beast. So, you can tribute this card and shuffle one Gladiator Beast monster from your hand or face-up field into deck or extra deck. Special summon up to two Gladiator Beast monsters from your deck. This is treated as a special summon by a Gladiator Beast monster effect. This card was, like, almost great. Because the first part of the effect, as I said, it's really a non-issue. If you if you want to use your normal summon on this, you can. But if you want to use it as an extender, like let's say you draw two of them, you could normal summon one, special summon the other as an extender, and then link off or exceed off with it or something. That's perfectly fine. My issue is that you're you have to open another Gladiator Beast card with this card. It's kind of like Magister. So Test Bear, it's kind of like not solving the problem that Magister has, where it's like to start your turn, you need this plus another gladiator beast monster at least this one can use a monster on your field so there are ways to get gladiator beast monsters out like using things for example like the primite engine to bring out gladiator beast andal may be the solution that uh test bear needs 
to make sure that it always resolves. But I don't like the idea that if I just draw a test bear by itself, it's not going to be able to do anything because I don't know. I would have much preferred some side, some kind of summoning restriction for the rest of the turn if it meant that I'd still be able to summon out the two Gladiator Beast monsters and not need to uh, another Gladiator Beast in hand or field because I feel like that would have worked a lot better. The third new card is uh, Flavius, the new field spell for Gladiator Beast. And you can discard a card and add a Gladiator Beast monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, obligatory field spell searches a card. I don't like that you need to discard, but the, I guess the plus side of that is that it's not an effect on activation. It's a once per turn effect that is like, as long as a card's face up on the field, once per turn, drop one, add a Gladiator Beast. So you will always have access to that effect, basically. But secondly, when an opponent's monster declares an attack, you can special on the Gladiator Beast monster from your deck, and if you do, it cannot be destroyed by battle. And it doesn't say by that battle, meaning like as long as that Gladiator Beast is face up on the field, it cannot be destroyed by battle. Obviously, if it shuffles back and then you summon out a new one, that won't matter. Maybe if like front row gets broken by like a Raigeki Lightning Storm or something, and you just need to like keep on playing, then I guess this could be a good way for you to make that happen. I don't think the second effect is necessary because the third effect is so good that it's probably going to be the reason why you actually play this card. So during the end phase, if a Gladiator Beast monster was special summoned from your deck this turn, you can set one Gladiator Trap from your deck and each effect is a uh, hard one per turn. Meaning that you now have access to Gladiator Beast Trap cards that may not have been as viable before, like Gladiator Beast Charge. Not to say Charge was a bad card, but with the limited amount of searchability in Gladiator Beast before, this support charge was kind of like okay am i really gonna spend my one or two search on like a gladiator beast charge or like should i go for the war chariot or should i go for the comeback which is the the card that actually got you like uh combos and some pretty good loops with tamer editor and stuff so this card kind of like the memento field spell in a way gives you access to not just your engine or to more of your engine but also gives you access to a potential trap cards that like can help you stop your opponent even more and only increase the ceiling of your end board i'll kind of just say this now you probably always search this off of test panther i i can't imagine you searching anything except this off of test panther unless you already have this card in your hand since it's a gladiator beast card and not just a gladiator card this also allows test panther to search for it also if you use the effect to summon during the opponent's turn it will still trigger its end phase effect so you could set something like a war chariot or a charge to be able to slowly take back the game state if like again if like your board is broken so our next glider beast monster is glider beast darius but not to be confused with the original glider beast darius like niggas gonna have to be like hermione and uh harry potter now it's darius not darius so Darius is a new Link 2 that has the same summoning condition as Test Panther, two monsters including a Gladiator Beast monster, so that means, you know, Nib Token, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what the second monster is, uh, we used to use Sky Striker, uh, Hornet Drones to make our Test Panther. Now it really doesn't matter, as long as it is any monster, as long as a Glider Beast is involved, it's just glad to be there. On Link Summon, he summons a level 4 lower Glider Beast monster from Hand or Graveyard. And this is actually really important because he's a glider beast monster summoning other glider beast monsters meaning he will trigger their effects which is just great right because now that means like you can uh, possibly summon a glider beast monster off of something like test panther trigger its effect and then you can link it off into darius special summon it back the level four lower glider beast monster that you just summoned and then trigger its effect one more time so it, it can be really effective for helping you like break boards make boards whatever you may have it also has a clause where if your opponent controls a monster, you can special summon a Gladiator Beast monster from your deck instead. Meaning, going second, this card is just, like, mandatory for you to make to be able to you know, potentially get something like one of your uh, pops, one of your extenders, like, if you didn't hard open it in your hand. And also, it doesn't have a level restriction when you're summoning from deck. So if your opponent controls a monster, this card's, like, twice as good. Now, the only uh, drawback to that really strong effect is that you cannot use monsters as link materials for the rest of the turn except glider beast monsters and that's regardless of which of whether you summon from hand or graveyard or from the deck if you use that effect you can you cannot use monsters as link material for us to turn except glider beast monsters so this is worded the same way that travagates are, are, are worded right so it doesn't mean that you cannot use other summoning conditions it doesn't mean that you cannot like make non glider beast link monsters because you still can you can still make ip you can still make whatever it is you know you want to play but you just have to be able to use 
the Gladiator Beast monster as material. Like, Gladiator Beast monsters have to be all the materials. Make sure that when you're comboing off with this card, my, my personal suggestion is always to go into Test Panther first, and then to go into Darius second, because I feel like that works better, because Test Panther gets you the Gladiator Beast that you want from deck, then Darius revives it, allowing you to, to keep playing. Also, he has an effect where it, if you happen to keep him on field, uh, Gladiator Beast monsters you control cannot be issued by battle or card effects during your opponent's battle phase, which it's not bad, it's just I doubt that you're going to keep him on field for that long. And the reason why I doubt he's going to stay on the field is because of the new fusion, Gladiator Beast Claudius. It, now, if there has ever been a boss of boss monsters, this is it. This guy's wearing, like, Heracleanus' armor, he's wearing, like, a whole, like, he is, like, every Gladiator Beast in one. I don't think you can make another boss monster for Gladiator Beast after this. Like, this is the Gladiator Beast boss monster. And so here's what he does. He requires five Gladiator Beast monsters, which seems kind of like unplausible if you're considering the way the Gladiator Beast fusions are usually made, which is by using monsters on your face of field. But he can be special summoned from your extra deck by shuffling the above cards from your field and graveyard back into the deck or extra deck. This kind of turns him into a mimic of the Memento boss monster, the combined Teku whatever that dude's name is. And the fact that he can use your Gladiator Beast monsters from Grave means that you're going to be going through some of these Link monsters like the new Darius, the new Magister, and what may have you, and you're going to be stacking up some of your Gladiator Beasts in the graveyard. As we go into some of the lines, you guys are going to see why it may be important that you Link off and you make some of these extra plays just so you can resolve the Claudius. So for the cost of five Gladiator Beasts, shuffling back, if he's summoned by his own summoning condition, he gets to give you a second battle phase. Or, I should say, he, he lets you conduct your next battle phase twice. Now, the difference between that and having, like, let's say, a second battle phase is that is the ability to play something like Runix. So, Runix would not work with Claudius the way it's worded now, because Runix require you to skip your next battle phase. So, you cannot conduct your next battle phase twice if your next battle phase is being skipped. You know what I'm saying? So, it goes onward to like the next next turns battle phase unfortunately this this does not work with runic but what it does allow you to do is it does allow you to basically push for a lot of pressure just uh, attack with certain gladiator beast cards shuffle back summon maybe clear the board do whatever it is that you got to do and then go into another battle phase where you can attack again for, for potentially even more damage tenpai wishes they had a card like this if tenpai had two battle phases they would go absolutely fucking nuts dude it would be insane but um, Tempai has a lot of hard ones per turn. Gladiator Beast is from a time where a lot of the cards do not have hard ones per turns. So there really isn't a lot of restriction to this card. Now, if you feel like leaving him on your field as being the 3700 body that he is, once per turn, if your opponent activates a monster effect, and this is a trigger, so kind of like Fenrir or, you know, what may have you, you can activate the appropriate effect depending on whose turn it is. If it's your turn, then you get to special summon a Gladiator Beast monster from your deck. If it's your opponent's turn, you get to su uh, special summon a level 11 or lower Gladiator Beast monster from your extra deck, ignoring summoning conditions. And now this is important because this can allow you to make stuff like the Gladiator Beast Gazarus during your opponent's turn to be able to like pot potentially clear the board. If you don't have them already, you can make some of your like monster or spell and trap negates during your opponent's turn if you're able to make this card. And because he's not restricted to being summoned once per turn, if you get nibbed halfway through your combo with Gladiator Beast and you have enough Gladiator Beast monsters to keep going, or if you have at least five Gladiator Beast monsters in your graveyard now, you can just make Claudius. The fact that like you can be rewarded for even going minus is great. And if you mix that with the field spell, where the field spell will be able to set like a trap from deck, you can set either a charge or a war chariot plus the Claudius, which can get you either a monster negate, a spell trap negate, or a, a pop two on demand so i think claudius is a good card i don't know whether it should be a one or two of in the extra deck because ratios and the lists are not going to be perfected yet but i do know this this is definitely like a really solid card for us to use it's really kind of funny because like i guess like letter beasts before they got screwed over because you do have like link monsters like drag asses who came out where master rule four was still a thing and you had to be able to summon a link monster before going into your extra deck if, if you didn't summon a link monster you can summon more than one monster from the extra deck at a time so they gave glider beast this card to make up for the fact that 
Glider Beast got screwed over when Tamer Editor came out. Because Tamer Editor came out really late here in the TCG, and then right when Tamer Editor came out, like a month or two later, then they implemented Master Rule 4, where you cannot summon multiple monsters from the extra deck, right? Without have, without the need of a link monster. So Tamer Editor just became like absolutely useless for like the longest time until they released Drag Asses. But like the amount of resources that it would have taken you to, to make the Drag Asses is like the materials that you needed to make the Tamer Editor. So it was kind of like difficult for Glider Beast to make both the Drag Asses and the Tamer Editor and it wasn't really able to keep up. Even the existence of Gladiator Rejection didn't really ch do much to change that. It was really only with the existence of Trabagade that Gladiator Beasts were kind of able to like get a few tops because then that allowed you to make Gladiator Beast monsters without really go using too many resources from the engine and then eventually building up, you know, your, your fusion monsters. So now I think this new support is just again i think it's like just slightly short of like a tier two or tier three deck with like the kind of boards that you can make we're gonna get into some lines now i'm gonna i'm gonna run down some of the just basic plays that are possible with the new gladiator stuff starting with magister plus any gladiator beast in hand well in this case i have proving ground so gladiator so magister plus a proving ground and the reason why I chose Proving Ground here is because we're going to search the Gladiator Beast that we think is most important, which is actually going to be our Gladiator Beast, Adarix. Now, Adarix is actually really important because Adarix mills a Gladiator Beast monster on summon, or when summoned by the effect of a Gladiator Beast, I, I should make that caveat. When summoned by the effect of a Gladiator Beast, it mills a Gladiator Beast monster from deck or extra deck to graveyard, and then it gets to copy the name and the level of that Gladiator Beast that you send which is actually going to come up. It's gonna help us make our plays really safe thanks to this one card. So Magister is gonna activate in hand to summon itself and the uh, Adarix. And this will allow us to chain block the uh, Magister with the Adarix. Adarix is gonna mill the Vespasius. This is the, the level seven Gladiator Beast that uh, helps us go into the big Sea Serpent fusion. And that'll make uh, Adarix a level seven. And then Magister will be able to search us any Gladiator Beast spell in this case, we're searching the Gladiator Beast comeback to allow us to revive a Gladiator Beast from hand or graveyard. So we activate the comeback, we bring back the Vespasius, and this is actually important because now this allows us to contact Fuse into our Tamer Editor. And Tamer Editor is like the best fusion in the deck. Like if, if you have the ability to make Tamer Editor, you always should. It's a soft once per turn that just lets you bring out a Gladiator Beast fusion monster from your extra deck, ignoring summoning conditions. And that's why the, the new Claudius had to say when summoned by its own effect, because Tamer Editor already exists to bring you out any Gladiator Beast fusion that you want, basically for free. And, and there's no cost to be able to, to summoning the Gladiator Beast fusion. It's just a really good extension piece for summoning out Gladiator Beast cards. So Tamer Editor brings out the Gladiator Beast Domitanius or Domitianus, whichever is the correct uh, pronunciation. And so Domitianus basically is a once per turn monster effect negation. That's that's really all it does. <laughs> it's a 3,500 body that can once per turn negate and destroy um, a monster effect, which I find it really funny because you can see in the artwork, he's clearly wearing the like Gladiator Beast shield equip spell, but he has like no protection from like destruction or anything like that. I'm like, that's a really weird aesthetic choice if like the card isn't going to even like do anything with that but all the more power to him i guess so in this particular line our dom which i guess i'm gonna call him dom from this point on because fuck saying his whole name dom from this point on actually is our fifth summon meaning this uh this play is actually safe from nibiru it's like okay so we used uh we we got to a, a place where we are safe from the big hand trap so what else can we do from this point? Well, now we can link off into our Test Panther using uh, our two Gladiator Beast monsters. So Tamer Editor cannot be used as fusion material. So that means that also means he cannot be used to contact use other Gladiator Beast monsters. And that's any of them, including like the uh, Claudius, the new one. Like it can't be shuffled back from the graveyard. It can't be uh, shuffled back from field. Basically, you're only going to be able to to use Tamer Editor for like an X Seed or Link Summon if you decide to use it. So we're gonna go into our Test Panther here. And Test Panther is going to allow us to search any Gladiator Beast card from our deck to our hand. 
So then we're going to get to go into our Flavius. Flavius gets to drop one to search any Gladiator Beast monster. It really doesn't matter at this point which one that you search, but you're going to be able to use your normal summon because Magister did not use our normal summon earlier to summon out the Gladiator Beast Sagittari or any level four lower Gladiator Beast, excuse me. Test Panther can then shuffle back that Gladiator Beast to get us a Gladiator Beast Equest from our deck to the field. It's being treated as summoned by the effect of a Gladiator Beast monster. So a quest gets to trigger to bring us back the Gladiator Beast comeback. Now comeback is actually really awesome. It's not once per turn, meaning we get to revive our Tamer Editor. And Tamer Editor is only a soft once per turn and it's a must first be special summon from extra deck, meaning it could be revived as many times per turn as you, as you can manage. And it could keep on summoning out more Gladiator Beast fusions. So let's go. Let's go summon out another Gladiator Beast Dom. And now we have two face-up monster effect negations on our field, allowing us to play around more hand traps. So now we get to go into the Gladiator Beast Darius. Darius on summon is going to be able to summon back the quest that we just used for Link Summon, and that will trigger the quest to add back the Gladiator Beast comeback. And this is the privilege of having cards that are not once per turn. But before we can activate this comeback, we actually do need to link off with uh, the Tamer Editor because Tamer is still on our field. So we link the Darios and the Tamer Editor into Drag Asses. You, you may be wondering if Darios has a good lingering effect to protect our monsters during the battle phase, why would we want to link this off instead of linking off, let's say, the Gladiator Beast Quest? And that is because of the clause of Gladiator Beast Comeback. So to, for comeback to revive a monster from your graveyard or glad to be monster from your graveyard, it has to be a different type than the monsters that you already control. So Darius is a beast warrior and Tamer Editor is a beast warrior. So if we kept Darius on field, we would not be able to revive Tamer Editor off of the comeback. That's why we go into Dragasses, who is a wing beast, allowing us free range to activate comeback. One last time to go for Tamer Editor and to go for Heraclinos. And it's the same deal with like Heraclinos. You may be wondering like, oh, if we had a spell and trap negate, why didn't we summon it like after the first monster negate? Because that would have been more balanced, right? You make the monster negate first to stop the nib. Then you make the spell and trap negate to, to potentially stop like, I don't know, imperm or whatever, if, if you're still worried about it. And then you summon out the dirt Domitanus, but it's the same deal, right? Heraclinos is a beast warrior. So if we would have summoned this Heraclinos before going into comeback for a third time, we would not have been able to revive Tamer Editor. So Heraclinos is always going to be your last fusion summoned off of your Tamer Editor, which is actually perfect, right? You don't need multiple Heraclinos on field because he has the effect to negate spells and traps, but he is not once per turn. As long as you have cards in hand to discard, he is not a once per turn effect to negate spells and traps. So in our current situation, right, we started out with five cards in hand. We have two Fuelos sitting in our hand that we won't be able to use at all. So that means that Heraclinos can get two negates for spell and trap cards uh, during our opponent's turn or whenever they activate it. So that's two spell and trap negates and that's two monster negates so far. And we also know the field spell is going to grab us a trap card from deck on end phase. So before we can end our turn, we have to make one more play. So I'm going to link off our drag asses plus a quest into a secondary os. And I had to do that because as you know, we have one, we have two with the Darios, three with Request, four and Dragass. And because Tamer Editor cannot be used as fusion material, we needed to make a fifth monster that we can use for a fusion summon and make the Gladiator Beast Claudius. And so on summon, Claudius is going to trigger to get us uh, a second battle phase next turn. And essentially, Claudius is just going to be here to, if our opponent activates a monster effect, we get to summon out the Gladiator Beast Gazarus or you can summon out another Dom. There really aren't many other good options for Glider Beast fusions. Like this is pretty much like as good as it gets. Nothing else is really gonna stop your opponent. So, All right, in end phase, we're gonna grab the Glider Beast charge. I figured since we already have two spell and trap negates, we really don't need the War Chariot here. I think charge is good enough. Uh, so that's uh, four interruptions, that's five with charge, and that's six with Claudius. So that's a two card combo or 2.5 card combo because you need the one discard for the field spell and you get about six interruptions for the opponent and you get a double battle phase and you get pr pretty much game on board if your opponent doesn't have a play. It's a pretty good way for you to play this deck. I, I should also note 
because Claudius is a trigger effect that relies on your opponent's monster effect activating. If you negate the activation with Dom, Claudius does not get to summon out a fusion monster. It just won't activate regardless of whose turn it is. If you negate the activation of the monster effect, Claudius will not activate or trigger to summon out more Gladiator Beast monsters. So our next uh, Gladiator Beast combo is going to be roughly the same thing, but it's going to assume that we already started with a Gladiator Beast monster. So we're just going to go through all the motions again, just so you guys can see it in uh, in real time, right? Majestus, Adarix, Vespasius, search the comeback, comeback effect, get Vespasius, Tamer Editor, fifth summon for uh, the Dom, go into Test Panther, Get us a field spell, field spell activate, search us any level four lower gladiator beast. Now, the reason why this is important is because Claudius cannot use fusion materials from the hand. So it's better that you discard whatever gladiator beast that you have in your hand to uh, resolve the Flavius, just so that you have the fifth material for Claudius in your graveyard. And you're gonna see why in a bit. So. Just like before, Test Panther going to the a quest. A quest, grab back the comeback. Comeback's gonna summon out the Tamer Editor. And you have to summon out the Tamer Editor here before you go into Darius, right? Because Darius is a Beast Warrior. So just make sure you summon out Tamer Editor and resolve comeback before Link summoning um, for, the, for the second time. Now we're gonna make the second Dom. We go into the Darius. Uh, bring back a quest, bring back comeback. Now we're going to Drag Asses. Come back for the last time. Tamer Editor brings out Heraclinos. This time we actually go into an IP using the Tamer Editor plus the quest. The reason why this is important is because previously we did not have that fifth Gladiator Beast to, to discard from the hand. We, we just had blanks in hand. We only had the Fuelos in hand. But now that we had another Gladiator Beast monster in hand, which is very likely because you're going to play a lot of them and a lot of them are gonna be duds in your hand because they won't really do much unless you summon them with something like Magister. So there's gonna be a lot of points where you may have a Gladiator Beast that you're not using that you can discard for the Fuel Spell, and that will allow you to have the extra body to make the IP to then go for the Claudius. Which, this board state looks very weird, right? Like the Link monsters in the main monster zone, the Fusion monsters in the extra monster zone, like this looks very awkward. Essentially, you don't need the Claudius to actually play your turn, um, is kind of like the idea here. Uh, Claudius can summon out another Gladiator Beast Fusion, like your Gazarus right here, and then IP can link off with Claudius to make something like SP to get you a double interruption. So if we consider that the same kind of combo line, except you have like two more interruptions thanks to IP. So it's two monster negates with the two doms, two spell and trap negates with Heraclinos, thanks to having two cards in hand. The Gladiator Beast charge, that's five interruptions, Claudius being six, and then IP into SP, that brings you from six to eight interruptions, since SP can be potentially two more interruptions for the turn. Which is a lot, right? It's pretty crazy. Just for, it, it, it is technically a three card combo. You, you can consider it 2.5 still. I consider it three cards if you need three particular cards in hand. I think it, it's it's a really good line and it, it has a really high ceiling. Like having hard negates for stuff on top of like pops for a face of cards or whatever can be really effective for stopping our opponent from playing the game. And you still get the double battle phase next turn, regardless of if Claudia stays on field or not. So now I want to showcase the power of Primite potentially with the Gladiator Beast stuff. And as you can see, I have the Test Bear ready to go in hand. I have like a third Gladiator Beast here just in case for whatever. And then we also have like a card here just to discard. So our Primite Lordy Load uh, gets us the Primite Roar. Roar, we pay 2k. We can summon out Andal from the deck. We can then go uh, Test Bear. Since uh, Andal was summoned from deck, we don't need to use our normal summon. And we can also use that same Andal to resolve the Test Bear. Test Bear isn't terrible. As I said, there are ways to manage the cost necessary to play the card, but I just wish it didn't require a second Gladiator Beast monster. I, I just, you know, that's just my personal take. So essentially we're doing the same line, except in this line, we are susceptible to, to Nibiru earlier on in our combo line, right? So since, since we summoned out two monsters already, basically once we resolve the comeback here, we're going to be vulnerable to getting nipped 
So from comeback all the way to, let's say, to the time you get Dom on field, you are susceptible to, to a Nibiru. But I don't think Nibiru would really hurt you here. We haven't used our normal summon, and we can use the Nib token to make a Test Panther. So I don't think it would be the end of the world if we got nib nibbed. But just to show uh, the full potential of the line, we're still gonna I'm still gonna show you guys everything that's possible. So we're gonna go come back, bring back the Vespasius, contact fuse into Tamer Editor, Tamer Editor, bring back Dom, Test Panther. It's essentially the same line, except this time it won't have as high of a ceiling. But yeah. So we go a quest, grab back the comeback, comeback effect, go for Tamer, Tamer effect, go for Dom, go for Darius, go for a quest, a quest effect, go for Dragasses, go for comeback, go for Tamer, Tamer effect, go for Heraclinos, go for Darius, we put all five back, go for Claudius, D double battle phase. And this point, at this point, is actually pretty funny. We do actually get to go. Uh, Primate Lordy load to summon out the Gladiator Beast and all from deck. And at this point, you have a choice. You can either go Tamer Editor plus Claudius to go into IP here, or you can use the Andal to go into IP. But if you use the Andal here, then you lose out on the Primordial uh, Roars effect in, in the graveyard. So let me see. Do I go for IP here or not? We do not. Okay. And there's probably a really good reason for that. So. Gladiator Beast Charge actually allows you to destroy any number of face-up cards on the field, including your own. So essentially, you can go, uh, once they go Normal Summon, you get to resolve Primate War. Since you control a normal monster, you can banish it from your graveyard and then target a, a normal monster that you control and banish a monster on the field with less attack than that monster. So if their Normal Summon monster is 1900 attack or less, it gets banished. Even if that doesn't hard stop their turn, having like an extra interruption on top of already having was this four hard negates because we started with four cards in hand so we should have another card on top of this magister so we should still have the same number of interruptions as the last two lines we still have the four hard negates with with our three gladiator beast fusions we still have a uh, charge and we still have uh claudius to bring us out a another uh gladiator beast fusion if need be and when we resolve charge we can just pop our andal and so that should give Claudius the means to be able to summon out Gazarus on resolution of any monster effect our opponent activates. So if we consider the uh, roar in Graveyard, that's one, uh, five, six, that's seven interruptions by going through the Test Bearer and Primordial line, or Primite line, excuse me, which isn't bad. I think this is pretty good. And like, just be really careful that like, if they did have the Nibiru, but they chose not to use it because you're on Primite, like, okay, like, if they chose not to use it because they saw the Dom, and then they're like, oh, fuck, I can't use it, but then you use Primordial uh, Lordy Load's second effect to bring out the normal monster, then if they really waited that long, or if they kept Nib in their hand for that long, then they get to activate the Nib to clear your whole board. Now, in that scenario, as I said, you can still make a second Claudius, because Claudius can actually shuffle another, another copy of itself back to summon out another copy of itself, so... All of this stuff, could, you, you could easily just shuffle back into the deck and make a second Claudius. Which would probably be the only reason why I would play two of this card. Because it, it, its ability to like bring you back into the game will probably be what makes this deck able to survive the grind game. If our board gets broken. Big if. You could get punished for being a little greedy if you go for a, a Lordy load and, and, and they held the nib in hand. But I don't think people are going to do that, personally. I think it's stronger resolve nib as early on as possible in the turn because if if I have Claudius anyway, it, like if you're clearing my board and I have Claudius anyway, then like you're only you may not be protecting yourself from getting gamed. You may still be be giving yourself the chance to play, but you may not be protecting yourself from getting gamed. You know, it really depends. And now I wanted to show one last combo line utilizing the Trapagate engine, which was uh, as I may have mentioned earlier the uh, best way to play Gladiator Beast up to this point in the modern format. And so I do still think it's a good way to play Gladiator Beast. It may not be as high of a ceiling as opening Test Bear with the Primite engine or as, op as opening just regular Gladiator Beast engine, but it still has some merit to it. And it does it all without using your normal summon. So you might as well give it a shot. That being said, you guys realize Fulos is a wing beast. So Tribigate could have been using this card the whole time. Like where, where are the Tribigate players at using Fulos, like, 
Like, what are you guys doing? Like, you, like this is not a brick in your deck. You have no diminishing returns playing this card, thanks to the way that your engine works. So, get to work. <laughs> Alright, so, Fractal, Kit, Kit, Nerval. Nerval into uh, Karas. Now, despite these guys being um, Wing Beast, you are still going to see me drop the Adarix because I want this combo line to work as if I don't already have a Glider Beast in hand, right? So Karas, boom. Now Karas is going to banish all four, right? So again, this is assuming I do not have a Glider Beast in hand or Grave already because uh, I do remember when testing out the first combo line, I had uh, I was discarding Andal at first. And I had the extra Andal, which is why I had to make the distinction in the two combos. But yes, th this is assuming no Glider Beast in hand. So we banish four to make the Shireg. Now, Shireg has a trigger here to banish any card on field. So if you're going second, you have the option to banish any card non-targeting if you'd like. But because the board is basically empty, we're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to link straight off into Faraji. And as you may already know, Shireg would trigger to search us a level four beast tri-type in this case we're going to search the rescue cat and as i mentioned before the magister stats are going to come up the fact that it's a level three beast allows us access into rescue cat without needing to play that um, fucking ancient ass dusty old glider beast sam knight you, you don't need that nigga anymore you got M magister is all you need so now farajee gets to special summon out the rescue cat from hand now the beautiful thing about this is that if farajee gets like impermed or like negated you can just normal summon out the rescue cat, you know? Uh, so then rescue cat gets to then bring out the double magister from the deck. Now their effects are negated, but you do get to go straight into test panther. Test panther. And you also do get to go uh, Farajit here. If you opened out like one of your uh, Aquists or one of your glider beasts that you want to get from the deck and uh, you don't want that glider beast in, in hand, then you get to put it back and draw another card. And then we get to go for Field Spell. Field Spell is going to drop one at any Glider Beast monster. At this point, we're going to add the Adarix. So Test Panther, shuffle back, special mount the Augustus. Augustus gets to summon one from hand. We're going to make Adarix here. And the reason why we're going to do that is because Adarix gets to mill one while also becoming a level 7 or higher, uh, a level 7 monster itself, meaning we now have full range to go into the Tamer Editor. Tamer Editor is going to bring out our Dom. Now we get to link off into the Darius. Darius is going to get to revive the Magister, and since it was summoned off of Rescue Cat, it did not get to re resolve its effect yet. So Magister is going to get us to search for the comeback, uh, go into Drag Asses, come back, it's going to summon out the Tame Editor, Tame Editor, bring out the Heraclinos. Now, as you can see, we're summoning Heraclinos a bit early here because we've ran out of comebacks. But the fact is, is that we did all of this without using our normal summon. We could normal summon out a, a Fulo still. Because we summon out Adarix with the Augustus. We use Test Panther to shuffle back. Karas was summoned by discarding one. So this was really made without any made without the use of any normal summon. So if you have a normal summon and you want to go into IP, you can. But we're gonna go with the Darius. Make the Claudius. Claudius effect. And now Arena is gonna set us to charge. And that's gonna be the turn. I do think if you really wanted to, you could play Trap Brigade Revolt in this deck because you'd be able to make charades during your opponent's turn. And I think you could play that, like, even without the Trap Brigade engine, you could still play that in your deck and be able to use that to combo. I mean, to stop your opponent from playing the game, potentially. This is Gladiator Beast now, you know? It's a very interesting deck. It has a lot of potential. I don't know how strong it's going to be. And I mean, especially in this particular field, you have the option to summon out another Dom here instead of going straight into the Gazarus. You have the option to go into the second Dom. And so you can get another monster negate. You can get, uh, you can still get, or you can get the pop too. So this is the list that I have been uh, dabbling with so far. Nothing set in stone yet, but I feel like if you're gonna play the Glider Beast engine, I feel like everything up to this field spell is mandatory. If you wanna play the Primite engine, I think uh, three Primite, one Roar, one Andal is fine. And uh, these are the extended Glider Beast monsters you may or may not want to play. The reason why I strayed away from Noxius is because of it being a Beast Warrior, it will conflict with the Comeback and the Adarix. So I think it's better Adarix into one of these two because they're different types. They'll always be able to summon back 
to be able to summon back off of uh, Glider Beast comeback. So it's not really a big deal if you mill one of these guys. Whereas like no Noxious, it's like it just conflicts too much, I think. So I don't think Noxious is bad. I don't think it, you know, it can't work. I just, Adorix just does the same thing, but better. Also, Adorix is level four, so it can be normal summoned. Whereas Noxious is level five. It's something of a hand trap, but it's, it's all right. It's just, it's, it's nothing perfect. I mean, it's funny how the original Darius is actually kind of like useless now. It's not bad to play, but the monster it revives, its, it's effects are negated. So it's not really like, it's not like, you know, summoning this and then like reviving, let's say like Gizarus is going to do anything because the monster's effects are negated. I'm keeping these two around just, just to clear boards. Ready Ari, I was going to consider Ready Ari, but like the card is actually like 27 lowest right now. Like the Edison players have actually like pushed that card to the absolute limits. That's a card that needs to be reprinted. A, a lot of these Edison, you know, a lot of these players, when like you see one of these reprint sets that are like, it's not really like, it's not really made for anyone in particular. And they're like, oh, well, we needed all these accessible reprints when like the cards were already like a dollar or less already. Whereas like Glattery Beast Ready Ari, the, the level three, this is a card that needs a fucking reprint. All right. If, if, if anything needs to be reprinted, it's this card right here. It's this guy right here. This dude only has like two printings. And he's like $27 right now. All right. That's fucking ridiculous. So I can get our shit together. All right. I was considering this card, but due to price point and also due to like it being like removing a card from play in the graveyard, I don't think that's going to be very relevant. It seems a little slow. I'd rather not. So I decided not to. There may be a matchup where this may come up at a certain point in the future, but it's definitely not necessary. And then I also have like Sagittari over here. Draw power can't hurt, right? Drawing an extra card to discard for like Heraklinos could actually come up maybe, if like possible. So we'll see. Gladiator Rejection is another one um, that I don't think this card's necessary. And I also don't think it is good because like for like, let's say we open this and like the Primite stuff, we go like Test Panther or Darius. Well, actually we should always go Test Panther first. We go Test Panther. Then we search like comeback. And then it's like, we have to use comeback early. It just doesn't do enough. E even with the primite stuff, like you need to open test bear or magister for this card to be good. And even then, if you're opening this plus test bear, it's like, I don't care about having this plus test bear. I, I need test bear plus an actual glider beast monster. So it seems like a decent one of, but I don't know. It doesn't seem necessary. Neither does drill beam, but it's a good card to have in case you already uh, opened the roar then you can, I don't know, go for Drill Beam instead of Roar. Do whatever it is that you gotta do. Or if you hard open the Andal, I guess. And then the Tribigate Engine or Tribigate Package, right? Fractal, Nerval, Cross Kit. Maybe get Bump Cross up to three. Uh, because uh, the Glider Beast Engine isn't actually that bad in the deck because it could summon out Dragass for free. And uh, Dragass is a good Glider Beast to have since like it's good into the battle phase to bring out two more Glider Beast monsters from, from the deck. And it can't be destroyed by battle, and your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when he attacks. So it's pretty cool. And then Rescue Cat, which I don't think the Tropicate line is necessary. I just think it's a good extra option if you need like the extra ability to dig for your Gladiator Beast cards. In case the deck is too inconsistent, you have extra options. These are all the ratios that I've been thinking of. I was thinking of maybe putting in one more of any of these into the extra deck. I know Baguska is here in case we get stopped pretty early. But now, after playtesting for a bit, I don't think Bagus is necessary. I do think maybe a second comeback might be good in case you need to search a second one rather than recycling the one that you already have. But uh, I'll need to do more testing before I can confirm that. Nerokius is like almost a good Gladiator Beast fusion, but he only protects himself from being destroyed by battle. There is also like the, in case you need a level five and all you have is level, <laughs> level four lowers, I mean, there is Esadari. I don't think it's good, but it's an option. It's also a really nice looking ultimate rare. It's, it's, it's one of the cheapest ultimate rares in Yu-Gi-Oh, but it's a nice looking ultimate rare. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then potentially a second Tamer Editor. Uh, I figure that the lines in this deck are going to be very susceptible to Bestials and DD Crows. So if you have the ability to make another Tamer Editor, or if you feel like playing Spell Card Monster Reborn, that's also another option. So that even though if you activate Spell Card Monster Born, the Tamer Editor, the Tamer Editor that you summon out that one time will not be able to be uh, to activate its effect. If you link it off and then bring it back again, then it'll 
then it'll reset basically so it'll be able to activate its effect so yeah uh, i'm considering a second tame error just in case the first one gets put out of rotation so i have a second one just just to uh, keep playing the game with but otherwise um let me know what you guys think in the comment section below this has been your boy nistro here signing out